Ladies and gentlemen, as voted on by Patreon, Stalker Anomaly. Probably the biggest overhaul mod there is for Stalker. It's a huge overhaul. It combines all the maps from all the games. Story modes for all the factions. You can play as different factions. There's also a warfare type game mode that you can play. Sort of like a conquest type thing, taking points of interest for your faction, controlling folks with a PDA. All sorts of stuff. Spending money on uh, picking up new troops. You get money for kills. It's a neat thing. I'm going to probably do a series on that. But for the moment, we're likely just going to rock story mode. I'm also going to be playing on not the hardest difficulty as I would normally. Probably just medium. Typically, Stalker being what Stalker is, you'd want to be playing it on the highest difficulty or at least near the highest just to really enforce that kind of survival overwhelmed by everybody type feeling until you get like proper armor and everything later on in the game and then it's a bit okay but stalker anomaly slows down the pacing so much and i feel like just generally makes it a lot more difficult that i think i'm okay with medium because of the pacing being slower i'm also not going to be going with survivalist progression difficulty we're going to go scavenger just for a, a bit of brevity, otherwise we're going to be like 90 episodes into this and we'll have barely gotten anywhere. I would like to get some sort of sense of progression going on. And with the progression difficulty set to scavenger, sort of increases the rate at which I think we gain reputation. Higher reputation tiers with factions unlock better prices, better quests I think, and also better gear, I believe. We might even eventually find equipment on people that isn't falling apart because in typical game fashion everybody is apparently using three percent durability weapons it's a pretty big process to like fix up other equipment i can go through that later on i know i know how to repair a gun properly and i know how to accept missions and they've even killed a few people in this that's as far as i've gotten i know just their bare bones basics i'm generally going into this kind of blind I did go into it my very first time on the highest difficulty, thinking, that's how I played Stalker always. <laughs> no, do not do that. Unless you really know what you're doing. It's possible. It's just, my balls started to hurt pretty quickly. Again, there are the, the multiple ways to play the warfare type thing, being like the PDA control RTS kind of war game type thing. I do want to try that out. I do want to check it out. We're going to do that as a different series, though and probably running kind of sort of alongside this one in parallel. If possible, I'll have to be a bit careful with save game management, but I can do it. I believe in myself. I want to try it. Seems fun. A lot more action. If you're looking for like a really fast pace and, uh, you know, things actually happening like a lot, check out the Warfare series because it's going to be happening there. Otherwise, Thorium mode, it's going to be starting a bit slow. There is also Azazel mode, which is just like a different way to kind of play. When you die, you just control somebody else. It's a bit buggy. It's a bit weird. Durability doesn't save on your corpse. And sometimes there's duplicate guns on your corpse. I don't know. I wouldn't recommend it. It's kind of all right for warfare, I suppose, though. But a lot of the time when you die and you switch to somebody else, it, it, it seems to just give you somebody who doesn't have armor, from what I understand. Or they don't have it on. And they're in the middle of a firefight. So you just you die again really quickly. <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't sound very fun. Maybe we try it out though and see. I don't know if I can disable it midway or not though, but for story mode, we can't have it on anyway. Survival mode being like a zombie defense type thing. No idea. Nobody really talks about that. I assume it's kind of whatever. Accessible zone. It's on by default and I, th I think I might want it off, but the trouble with this I noticed was a lot of the time on your PDA, you can see the route to a different zone. It's just following the main road. Like it, it's right there. But if you don't have that unlocked on your PDA, you try to go through the zone change and it's like, no, you don't know this route and it boots you out. That's very frustrating because it's not really a hidden route at all. It's just following the road. The hidden routes are the ones where it's like the fence is broken or you go up this cliff and weave between these trees and there you go. That's how you get to that zone. Those are the ones that should be hidden. But that's not really the case. So it's kind of like, I like the idea of it but I don't like the way it's been implemented. Though to be fair, there are a lot of ways to get around that. If you have accessible zone disabled, 
You can talk to, I think, like barkeep people and purchase information on the different routes. You can find info on the routes on other people's PDAs or on their journals that they can drop sometimes. You can talk to escort NPCs who will kind of sort of Sherpa you across the field and I think walk you there, maybe, possibly, if they don't die by some chimera suddenly. Such as life in the zone. Um, I, I don't really want to be just like caught in at a dead end though, unable to progress because I don't know the route and I need to find out how to get the route. That sounds really annoying. Again, I like the idea of it, but the implementation seems a bit sus. So the accessible zone we're going to have on, which is the default to be fair. Iron Man mode off. Uh, I do like that you can have multiple Iron Man modes or uh, lives though. And you can also gain lives if you survive long enough, you sure to get a life back. That's kind of neat. I like that. That's a neat way to handle it. I could actually maybe see myself going for that type of Iron Man. But uh, the way that it is for me, I usually take it a bit serious anyway. I value my life at all times, even if we're in a really, 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 really dumb, bad spot. I still try to make it through legit. It's more entertaining that way. It's more fun that way. It's more memorable that way. So we're going to still kind of value our life as as if we have Iron Man mode on. And then for recording purposes, campfire mode, agony mode. Uh, gotta be at a campfire to save. Gotta be in good health to save. I need to be able to save whenever. <laughs> I'm, I'm recording. It is what it is. Sometimes I just gotta go. With that rundown, I think we're kind of ready to get going here. Medium difficulty, scavenger progression. I guess, yeah, you can change factions too. Mm, I suppose. Uh, I think I'll probably s stick with the free stalkers just because... I think they'd have the most fleshed out story. But when it comes time for warfare, we might play as somebody else, but you can be the free stalkers, bandits, uh, clear sky, duty, freedom, mm, mercenaries, mercenaries, military, ecologists, monolith. <sighs> Did I do it? <laughs> There you, yeah, you're ecologist. Okay, cool. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> that changes the inventory, the loadout that you can potentially bring. Uh, obviously, where you start, like you're not always starting in the rookie village. If we start with monolith, we start off in Pripyat. If you're the ecologist, you got a couple. I don't know, just the one choice. Are they all just the one choice? I thought one of them had two choices. Maybe not. Okay. Different starting spots, though, for the different factions. I assume they all have a story, but I don't know how fleshed out it is. I don't even know how fleshed out the story is in general. So I feel like Free Stalkers is probably the best bet to ensure that we get something of a story happening. Portrait wise. Um, mm, um. And ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's Tom Hudson. In the flesh. The origin story. Probably before XCOM, I would imagine. Maybe. Not too sure. And then the stuff to bring. I don't remember exactly how much of this stuff was already in Stalker once upon a time. I feel like there's a lot of new things in it, but I can't be certain. Because uh, I don't really know a whole whole lot about this, so I don't really know what's best to bring and what not to bring. Obviously, a weapon would be cool, but they're worth a lot of points, so I'm probably going to pass on that. I do know how weapon maintenance works. I know how repairing a weapon from scratch works, using the workbench and swapping out replacement parts after repairing up the individual replacement parts. I kind of hate that you need, like, a, a different kit for every step of the way, and how quickly a kit gets used up when you're just trying to build a weapon. I find that very frustrating. There's a mod to remove that, though. There's a lot of mods for this. I may or may not put it on at some point. I don't know. For the moment, all I've got is a shaders thing. Um, That's about it. My experience with this is almost null. So... Yeah, this was, I think, a ration thing, right? Yeah, an IRPB combat ration. 200 points weighs 1.5-ish kilo. Seven portions of food, though. 3,600 calories in total. Not a ton of calories, but does that math even add up? I guess it does. You are right. Um, that, that, that's food taken care of for at least a while. We don't have to worry about that. We do start with a bread. 
cool. <laughs> and, uh, and a canteen of purified water. Doesn't give us a whole lot of thirst reduction, satiety level only. 66 calories equivalent for water, which I guess is enough. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really too sure. I think it, I think the thirst is something else that it doesn't display here, because there's also significant thirstiness reduction there with the green pep. I'm not, I'm not positive. Um, but we start with that. It's got three uses to it. That's kind of all right. Could pick up some energy drinks as well. They also take care of that a little bit. 50. 100 for a baked bean. Cigarettes, I think we want for reducing the radiation. Because the radiation pills are 125 points for that. And that is a lot of reduced radiation. Like a lot of a lot, I think. Some smokes is going to be the way to do it. Bandages to take care of bleeding. Maybe a spare battery. A grenade would be really cool. <laughs> but that kind of leaves me with no way to actually heal. We can stop bleeding. But when it comes time to actually repair damage, we are SOL. Oh, we can pick up a first aid kit still too. Aha. Excellent. Fantastic. This is... This is going to go great. We can bring along a calculator, or a calculator, or a detector, but this is just the echo detector, which from what I remember is like actually garbage. I don't know if it's any better in this or not. I don't know. But like our flashlight and our PDA, they take batteries, so we'll bring along a spare battery just to be safe. Mm, okay, I think that's all, that's all good. Quite a bit of setup time, I apologize for that. But uh, trying to also explain things for folks who may not really know what this is, or perhaps haven't played it in a long time. It's also an old mod, too. Lots changed as time goes on. And we're in. With... Mmm. Nice. <laughs> Some nice rain to start off with. Excellent. Set the mood. Hopefully some of these areas are, um, not too dark and not too bright. I'll do what I can in editing a little bit for you, but I've got the shaders on mostly just to try to find, like, a kind of mid-decent middle ground. I don't really want to be out at nighttime because of nocturnal creatures, for one, but also, hey, Sid's got a quest for us. Nice. Didn't really notice that before. Interested in adventure? Fame? Cash? Come to my place in the rookie village and we'll talk. Right on. First off, we should probably get equipped up. Nighttime is very dark. Even during a full moon, I can, like, kind of sort of just barely make out the tails, but not really well enough. Like, I'll see a bush move, but I'm not too sure why. If I'm being shot at by somebody, I'll see the flash from their gun, but I won't really know where they've moved since and all that. We're going to be avoiding nighttime kind of sort of the best that I can, which is fine because we have to worry about sleep deprivation as well, so that kind of works out. And flashlight and PDA. Aha! Right. Okay. So. Buttons. Oh, yeah. Kind of gross in here. Some of these textures are like really, uh, bleh. What is that? Oh, raisins. Mmm. Yum. 172 calories. Man, that's like almost a, almost a loaf of bread. Excellent. What a, what a nice little find that is. I did notice, though, during some of the weathers, like, after storms, it tends to get a bit foggy and stuff. Uh, that seems, like, almost a little too bright. There's, like, not really a lot I can do about that. It just kind of is what it is, I think. We'll see, though. Again, I can fix it up for what editing, if necessary. A telescopic mirror. A military item. Nothing we can use, though. Just some folks might pay a nice price for it. Looking for an experienced stalker who can lead me through great swamps right now. I'm in Corden. West of the farm. Too bad. I'm not going to great swamps. Although, isn't that like... You know, like right next door. <laughs> the rain drops on my PDA. <laughs> I mean, that's technically easy. West of the farm. Define farm. That I'm not too sure on. 
I mean, that's a military camp. That's 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 still that's out. I don't know. So, um, oops. buttons. Well, let's talk to Sid first off. See what he's got for us. I think it might always be the same because story. But we can also talk to just random people around. Sometimes they've got stuff to trade. Sometimes they've got quests for us to do. Trading with them is often not the play because I think their prices are usually pretty terrible. But in a pinch, it works out. Barrel additional threaded canals advanced. I can probably sell that in plastic and synthetic parts. We can maybe keep that. Because that's a basic one. We just need a basic kit and we can install that. Or give it to a, a technician dude and borrow his workbench and we can, like, sort of borrow his kit that way. Yeah, I should. How you doing? Ah, oh, jeez. Good to see you. I heard you promising an adventure fam and cash. Can you help me find the wish granter? Basically, no. Next boss leaves in 20 minutes. <sighs> Good one, Sid. Looking to find the Wish Granter, you know what they have, all have in common today? They're all worm food, except maybe Strelok. In any case, the Wish Granter is just a legend, a myth, but the money I offer is real. Whoa, how do I get rich? Me with Mangun. If you ever find yourself struggling for work or just want to make a little extra, go see these contacts. They pay well, and you'll make good connections along the way. Honest work, or at least as honest as it gets in the zone. Don't disappoint me. I don't know who Mangan is. I guess we'll find out. Any other general work you want done? From Agroprom. Some special supplies from another trader. Courier missing. I don't know where Agroprom is, but maybe. Pandit faction patches six? That I can do. What else? Killing some bandit in Darkscape? And that's, that's it. You're yeah, right. Wait, Dark Valley. You're yeah, right. Sure. I can only accept two quests at once. You can modify that though in the settings. You can have up to, I think, like 10 quests per NPC or something. It's a lot. It's a lot of a lot. Speaking of a lot, he's got a lot of gear as well. Like a ton of gear. I think he's got a little bit of everything. But his prices are, as you'd expect, terrible. There is a mod for Anomaly that makes traders a little more specific and stuff. And specialized. I'm not sure if that's still necessary. It's an old mod, and it could be for an old version of Anomaly where the vendors were a little more just kind of generic. But they have different prices for stuff. They're willing to buy different things, like he won't accept the wallet, whereas other people might actually be interested in said wallet for probably a terrible price, but whatever. They all have different prices, their own specialties of stuff that they sell, and different prices for what they're selling as well. And then that also modifies based on their reputation with their faction. Unlocking cooler things, neater things, and cheaper things. What's that? Little baggy. Oh, oh, a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of. Wow. I don't think I can afford to buy anything from him, except maybe... Maybe more ammo. Because ammo for this is... Okay, I can buy, like, a magazine. Okay, Sid. Alright. Uh, good meeting you, buddy. We're not selling those to you. We're gonna sell those to anybody else. I don't know if his prices are okay for anything. Like, it, it, does he ever have okay prices for anything? Ever? At all? Whatsoever? I feel like no. Hi, Wolf. Any work you want done? Kill some mutants in Cordon east of the Rookie Village? I'll do it. Uh... The job's done. I think... I think that might have been the shooting I just heard. Okay, well, hey, cool. Free 5,700 bucks and rumors are spreading about our latest efforts. Any work you want done? Rescue a courier west of the car park? Another one is Sid's new delivery man got caught up in some trouble, and I've been asked to reorganize his retrieval. I know where he's being held, but I need a competent fighter to free him from whatever band of scoundrels is holding him, and bring him back to camp safely. Will you do this? Uh... Anything else? That's it. Okay. Yeah, alright, west of the car park? Sure, that's not... 
It's not that bus stop up there, is it? West of the car park. Oh, okay, that, that is the car park. Okay. I see. You, you just you just said west of the car park is all. Maybe the west part of the car park or something. Okay, we can do that. Mm, looking around houses and such. I'm not sure if there's much point in doing that. A lot of these, I think, are generally empty. Like the, cr the crates and stuff that we can break open with a knife. I think that's, like, truly RNG, but otherwise stuff just laying around, like, on a table and stuff, I think that's, like, scripted to be there, but it's, uh, kind of randomized within a category of, of what it is. And I think a lot of these areas don't have much. There's a lot of stashes like this that we can find. A lot of hidden stashes, too. The green boxes tend to have nothing in them early on. From what I understand, that might be changing as we progress through the game and reach, like, later game stages, because I think this does have a game stage type thing. I right, your reflection is wild in that water. Hello, hip. You good? I know a guy, rich in all senses of the word, silly and privileged in equal measure. He's out there, treating, treating the zone like a safari right now. Doesn't care for artifacts, just old guns. Oh my god, these people blowing up my Twitter over here. Just saw some army guy nearby. Yeah, dude, there's a military base. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, collect guns and shoot pigs with them. Even wants to find a scoped Taz that has seen some genuine zone action as a souvenir. <gasps> Whoa. Last guy I met who knew where to find a scoped Taz is Hunter, and he died years ago. None of the big time traders blow the barriers he mentions it in finding one either. They don't seem to think it's worth their time. Bring it along with 20 rounds of buckshot. And I'll get paid a bunch. Okay. May as well. The only way that quest can fail, I think, is if she dies, but I don't think she'll die. Maybe. She's like a fancy named person. Yeah. Huh. Oh, neat. Okay, cool. Right on. Also, the spot to sleep. Hip plus. But yeah, like game stage things. These are usually going to be empty. I think stashes in the world, there's just a chance that they got stuff in them. I think. Unless you were told about the stash from a quest, like, as a reward. I think maybe that might be uh, a bit different. Hello, fanatic. Good old tutorial man. I could use some help. Let's go boar hunting. Here, have 16 bullets. That's definitely enough to hunt boars. Okay, fanatic. <sighs> Whatever you say. But if you see people, like, sitting around the fire or something, it's usually worth talking to them because they might have a basic quest for you. The trouble is, though, like, if they die at any point because they're out and about wandering and patrolling, and as you'd expect with Stalker, the world's going on with or without them. If they end up dying out there randomly, you fail the quest, and your reputation kind of sinks a bit for failing, so... It's a little bit of... Make sure you don't accept too many quests that you can't handle. And also, just generally be careful what you accept and from whom. So the boars are right across the road here. At least, I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, they're, they're almost straight ahead. They are, however, boars, which for me... Are a little bit problematic. Because they're very healthy. And tanky. I would like to find an anomaly and bring them into it, but I'm not sure if I can find one here. I might have to just go for it and hope for the best. Since he has a companion, you can see him on the right side of my screen. His health and his distance from me, his portrait will go red if he's in combat. Uh, I've also got access to a sort of command wheel and I can have him hold stuff for me and, and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of neat, but also a little bit basic. If you talk to them, you get a lot more options for it, so it's really just for the quick commands, though. Dude, I don't see, like, an anomaly or anything anywhere, dude.
ordinarily you can kind of hear the anomalies too, but not hearing it either. Okay. Their placement is random in this from what I can tell. Sometimes could be very hot, other times not so much. Okay, they're coming. He's gonna die! Don't die! Do not! Me either, though. Ah, uh, we did it. Uh, he got hit like once and his health is half. Man, so rough. <laughs> I tried this a couple times just to see, like, is this even possible? And it is, with great effort. That's why I wanted an, uh, uh, an anomaly thing to help out. That was crazy. What now? Uh, sure. I saw that. I think the town's handling it. Okay, he wants me to try to skin them, but spoiler alert, we can't. This knife sucks. There's, like, two tiers of knife. This one, and the cooler one that allows you to skin everything. And I think that's it. Doesn't really mean a whole lot to us right now. But since we can't skin them, we could just move on. We'll go for a save because sometimes he bugs out at this point. What are you fighting over here? What are you struggling against so much? Did you get it? It looked like maybe a, <laughs> a blind dog or something. Man, this guy, this guy died. Yeah, and get used to their equipment being just completely oh, trashed. That is extremely normal. Um, I guess while I'm here, if you do want to take something that they've got, like a gun or something, you got to go into the details and you got to look and see the replacement parts. These things we get from shredding similar equipment. The number on their uh, shows their their quality or yeah quality their durability what they're currently at its health there's tools and stuff we use to repair these specific replacement parts you can also just replace the gear itself without having to break it down with compatible repair kits but a lot of these only work above certain health thresholds like this is not usable below condition level 70. anything that i find on people is going to be so poor that none of that stuff will work we like have to break it down into parts and repair the parts specifically using um, just general stuff and things like sewing thread and sewing kits and stuff like that for a lot of the fabrics. We need materials to break this down though. This being light armor, we need some sort of like a scissors or a knife or something like that. And then once we get those replacement parts, we take a second one of these that we find because the first one we destroyed getting the parts and fixing up the parts. The second one that we find that we actually want to keep we then bring to a workbench, spend some money so we can use said workbench, use the compatible workshop kit, field armor toolkit in this case, and replace the parts individually. I think these kits only have two uses, and you use one use every time you throw on a replacement part. So you're probably going to want to get a couple kits. That's the very annoying part. That's what I don't like, and I think there is a mod to remove that part of it. I like breaking them down, and I like repairing the individual parts. But when it comes to some guns, they've got like four replacement parts. You need two complete kits to fix them up. And it's very frustrating. Even though you've got the no parts and you're replacing the parts, as I just find it to be a little bit too much sometimes. We'll, we'll see how it goes, though. Oh my god, a pseudo dog. Neat. Take all that. That's more money. Also, the dude dropped a little bit of money, too, I think I looted. Did anybody else die by chance? Man, I hope nobody else died from that really terrible attack. Oh, it was so dangerous. I think only the one person did. Drats. I mean... Yay! <laughs> yeah, okay. So anyway, to the anomaly. It's gonna be a long time before we get, like, a proper gun. Because, like I said, having to buy the kits or finding the kits if you're lucky enough, I think a lot of that is like a game state type thing where you just gotta be far enough in the game for that to really become much of a thing. It's like a big milestone. 
early on though. Let's just forget about it. We're not going to be getting a decent gun for quite some time. We're going to have to just save up our money and buy a cheap pistol. And work with that for a while. Ideally buying the pistol from Natsit because Natsit is extremely expensive. Where do you want me to go for this? The other side. Alright. Um... Is that flush or boars? I think that's just flush. Okay. Somebody else is fighting them, and I'm okay with it. Empty! Guess I don't really need a flashlight on them. So, hello, Fanatic. This is where he can bug out, because he often wants to move around a lot, and if he walks too far away from you during conversation, it cancels out the conversation entirely, and there's no way to reinitiate this. So, show me! Get the Jellyfish Artifact. Echo Detector. Get! Nice! Also, Bloodline Container. Get! Nice! And then also some vodka. Excellent! Okay, see you later. He's no longer with me, and he'll walk back to town. So, the way this works nowadays, Bloodline Container houses the artifact. Because the artifact spews out a ton of radiation just having it in inventory, it's too much to withstand. You're gonna need to drink a lot of vodka to pee out the radiation, or smoke cigarettes, which is why I got the cigarettes to get rid of radiation without blurring my vision. Vodka is also very heavy, it's usually like 1 kilo-ish to 1.5 kilo per bottle. It starts to add up quite a lot. So I like cigarettes for that. Put the artifact in the lead container though, and it no longer speeds radiation. You can't sell it while it's in the container, you have to take it out of the container to sell it. You also cannot equip it while it's in the container. We have to get a different type of container for that, which it does sell, but it was like 40,000 bucks for one. Way too expensive. We could also make our own eventually. It's probably the route we're going to be going, but who knows. When it's inside those, they've got a permissible radiation level. There's like three different tiers of them, I think. Maybe four. Or perhaps even just two. I'm not too sure. Um, once you put them in there, then you can equip those. And that's fine, and that's generally how you do it. So anomaly-wise, I can kind of just see where these ones are. The radiation's going to be a little bit of a problem. Our bolts are not infinite. He gave us some bolts. We start with one bolt. Make no mistake, that one bolt is indeed one bolt. Oh yeah, I need the detector on. Uh -huh. I think it's just like over here. Yeah. Aha! And then throw that into the container. Ah, good and safe. Ish. It's still radiated here where we are. Ooh, plastic film, and what is that? Gunsmithing tools! Oh my god! Excellent. It's actually a really cool find. And, uh... Hi. <laughs> are you, what are you already doing here? Are you speedrunning? That's weird, man. Any work you want done? Nothing? Trade? Uh... Okay, I think this guy killed a zombie bandit at some point in time. Um... Hmm... I am curious. I completed the quest for this thing. We can open it up. Try to sell it to you. Two thousand bucks. Okay. Did that- did that cancel out the quest? That's what I'm not sure on. Yeah, okay, that canceled it out. Okay. <sighs> Thought I'd try. <sighs> Never saw any colleges here so early before. There's the anomalous bread. I guess I'm gonna be loading anyway. But, uh... I can show you why that's a terrible idea. Can we even get to it safely? I think all of that area is off limits. Onto the pipe. 
around the bend. Holy crap. I do have a lot of bolts. Maybe they are infinite. How many of these do I have? Okay, I have seven more. I still have seven. Okay, these are infinite. I'll have to modify that. Whoa, anomalous bread. A piece of bread as dark as the soul of the person that left it. Just spews out radiation constantly. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Our health is just draining. Put it in the container though, and yay! <laughs> Uh, not a lot of point doing that. Alright, let's let's load then and see if I can get my artifact back. I wasn't sure if selling the artifact then invalidated me from turning it in or not. Good to know. We can try to sell it to Sitho, I guess. We accepted the quest. Yeah, okay. Good, good. So this will also be a good test to see if stuff um, loads immediately or not chest is still empty. I think we were still clear. Yeah, okay. Oop, there it is. Throw it away. Yay. And then the safe. Okay, cool. That's that's still the same. Excellent. So next to our health, we got a little radiation symbol inside of a circle. Circle indicates that we have a growing slash existing need. So we need to get that taken care of. I'm going to take care of that via a smoke. Let's see if that is enough. I'm not too sure. And now we have a radiation symbol inside of a squirrel and is inside of a squirrel inside of a square indicating that we're actively taking care of that need may or may not be fully taken care of by the time the buff is gone, but it's being worked on with the radiation symbol inside of the circle flashing. That tells me that it is kind of sort of about to drop off and there it goes. It's already gone. Yay. Hey, dude, I already did it. Hello. I got it. Whoa, no way. Let's go back to the village. We'll continue your training there. You definitely weren't already working on it. Okay, I'll just meet you there. <laughs> oh, you're following me now, are you? Okay. I'm used to him just already being here waiting for me. 